Hi, I'm Erin Kolchar, a member of Team Hercules at WPAA-TV. Tonight, I'm honored to be speaking with our guest, Christine Webster of Gallery 53 in Meriden. Thank you, Christine, for joining us. It's a pleasure to be speaking with you. No, it's a pleasure to be here. Trust me. <laughs> to start off, what got you interested in art? My mother is an artist still. When you live with art, it, it rubs off. And well, I thought for a brief time I'd like to be a vet, but I'm allergic to animals, so that wasn't <laughs> going to work out. And it turned out that I was pretty good at art and ended up following that passion. Your passion for art has led you to your current position now as the president of Gallery 53. For those who might not be familiar with the organization, could you explain a little bit about it, its mission? We actually are the oldest arts and crafts association in Connecticut, returning 114 December 7th. We've been in downtown Meriden since 1981. We own the building. We're a juried organization, so it, whatever work, it has to be quality work. That it's got to be all handmade, uh, something that people would want to purchase. And we've been doing classes and demos and different community events since 1981. And we're we're a nonprofit. We're all volunteers. Um, we pay our director a minimal uh, amount of money, 20 hours a week, and everybody else just does it out of the goodness of their heart. So you've been with the gallery for several years now. Could you talk a little bit about where you started and what your role was in the beginning and then how it's transitioned over time to where you are now? Certainly. Um, I was actually on the board of the Augusta Curtis Center and the Meriden um, Arts Council, which ended up, both of them have dissolved over the years. And I promised my mother when I retired that I would help with the gallery because she's been a lifelong member there. And she just turned 93, so that's a pretty long membership. I started as secretary, and as you might guess, art teachers don't make very good secretaries. But I, I worked my way up in the ranks, and I've been president um, since 2015 and loving every minute of it. Each person on the board does their own part. Um, we have certain people who only hang things in the shop. We have certain people who only do social media. I do the classes, so we all have our little niche of the team and we have a very dedicated group of people making that happen. The gallery offers a variety of different classes and I was wondering what were some of the classes that you are teaching right now and what are some of the ones that the organization offers in general? We have a, um, a Wednesday and Thursday morning painting class, one with an instructor, one open studio. My mom before she retired used to do pastel portrait class on Tuesday mornings. I did um, adult ed, um, but based at the gallery, and we've done uh, mosaics, fused glass, jewelry, drawing. Uh, those are the things that I love to do, but we have other instructors that come in to di teach different classes as well. How does the teaching artist process work? Basically, if you come in and you say you want to teach ice dye, and I don't know what ice dye is. You have to come in and explain to me. I show you what the gallery is like, our studio upstairs. You come up with a proposal. Whatever price you come up with, you get 60%. The gallery gets 40%. And then if you need materials fee, that goes directly to you for whatever it is we're doing. I've had some former students who are coming in to teach some classes, which I absolutely love. But we're expanding classes all the time and demos. We're, we welcome new artists, new mediums, new everything. Are there any mediums that you're not too familiar with that you'd like to get to know more? You know, we've done uh, calligraphy. We have someone coming in to do uh, cold wax and caustic. I have no clue what that is, but it's fascinating to me. And yes, I'd like to see how you do it. And yes, I'd like to take the class in it myself to see, you know, to explore new things. The thing about art and crafts is that you, you go into the store and this glass is beautiful and that glass is beautiful and whatever you are into you always end up buying more than you ever <laughs> yeah. need like if you have someone in your family who knits you know the yarns on sale it's gorgeous you buy it just to have it I'm trying now not to go in that direction because I have I love doing the diffuse glass and the mosaics and I have a ton of supplies uh, yes I would in my heart of hearts like to try it but that means buying more things and taking more classes and I'm busy right now. The organization itself is deeply rooted in community. What are some of the projects that you've led or worked on since your time in the organization? There's a lot. We were involved with the Little Free Libraries. There's now 23 around town. We've decorated them, mosaic them, painted them. We've done different mosaics. There's a mosaic 
over at Merritt Mall I, there that we did with a Boys and Girls Club. There's a huge mosaic on the back of Gallery 53 of a dragon's 14 feet long that we did with middle school kids. As you cross the railroad tracks coming um, going from east to west, there's the big Meriden with the daffodils. I did that with eighth graders of Lincoln. A, a lot of different projects, and currently we, we are still doing projects with different organizations. I'm working with uh, Washington Middle School currently to do something for their hallways. We just painted the Church Street stairs with uh, an organization called Sustainable Meriden, and we're looking to paint uh, Bunker Street uh, under the bridge there in the spring with high school kids. Uh, I have a lot of irons in the fire. When I was there, you were showing me a project you worked on at the beginning of COVID. I remember there were some mosaics of hearts. We call it the Quilt of Caring, so it's 24 9 by 9 hearts done by uh, students aged 6 to 14 and a couple scout leaders thrown in. Um, and hopefully that's going to find a public place to be displayed permanently. How did COVID-19 impact your organization and the process of getting people in the building since it's such an interactive space? Brought us to a, plan a standstill. Um, in addition to just prior to COVID, our director of 13 years decided to retire. So enter a new director, enter COVID, enter closed doors. We have to reinvent. Fortunately, our social media person on board, Rose, is a whiz. And she came up with some plans to do things online, stores online, pick up, we'll deliver, we'll ship. Anything we can do to have you buy some art from us. Mm -hmm. well, how did you keep afloat. We got a grant, um, or actually a private donation, so that we were up to up our game for emails and um, online shopping, you know, uh, all the software necessary to make a business survive. So that was key in, in getting things going. We, we started the masks. Um, that was huge. Uh, we sold kids masks, adult masks, all different, you know, flavors and themes and things like that. We're doing all sorts of little things to make the bigger picture work. Online shopping, um, signature artists on our website, more uh, social media. We're on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Uh, we rely a lot of on that and we we changed up so if you are, you know, you, you just won the Best in Show Award, you are going to be on our Facebook page and our Instagram so you can see a picture of yourself with your work. You can show it to your family. Um, I think all that is key these days for keeping in, in contact with people. Not everybody gets the newspaper anymore, so social media is huge. And our uh, social media specialist is doing a heck of a job making sure that she gets all this stuff out there. Did um, COVID make you utilize social media more than it did in the past? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. COVID-19 impacted your business in a pretty strong way. What are some of the projects that you've been working on to kind of get back on your feet? We used to have an annual gala every year where we would have uh, music. The mayor had come and uh, sang a couple years in a row. We had passed around hors d'oeuvres, but that all stopped with COVID. So now enter COVID and we have to reinvent ourselves because we're closed. We had a project with the church across the street where we had it, it was bread and broth. So a Washington middle school teacher and his students made handmade bowls, and then we had soup donated from various restaurants around town. And it was held at the church. We had live music, but we had to go to Plan B. So then we had bread and broth to go. We did that all year, and fortunately we had four restaurants in town that helped us with the soup, and it was pretty successful. During COVID, um, I had a, my mosaic team, I call it, and we started doing large-scale mosaics, three feet by five feet, because we were broke. Uh, no income during COVID. Um, so people would come in, like you could come in on a Saturday morning, someone can else come in on a Tuesday night, and everybody did part of the mosaic that we in turn sold to a couple businesses in town, and we have some more that we are finishing up and hope to sell as well. Another piece that I saw when I went in the studio was a large mosaic of an underwater seascape. Could you talk a little bit about that one? That was, again, during COVID. Um, I drew it out. I've always loved underwater. Um, and I had different people that had taken multiple classes with me that were proficient in mosaics. So they would come in and, and do a piece. Uh, we subsequently done a second underwater one. 
and then we've done two, one of the Meriden Traffic Tower that we just finished and another one of Castle Craig with the big heart on it, um, all of which we hope to sell uh, going forward to help pay for our roof that we desperately need. We tried some Mommy and Me classes where we did stepping stones. So basically you take like a cake mold or equivalent, a plastic mold, you put the glass in the bottom and then you came to my house and we poured cement. Every kid wants to make cement. <laughs> so you pour the cement, you pop it in the mold, you come back in two days, you pop it out and you have a stepping stone. It's, it's easy for all levels and they get to take something home. If you're going to bother creating art, I don't want you to say, you know, okay, I got an A on this, I got a D on it, whatever. Throw it in the garbage, see you later. You, I want you to take it home, have it hanging up, show your family, show your friends. That's, that's, that's what I'm about. I've had students that have done mosaics on the back of the building. They've graduated, gone off to college, and they came back and said, Miss Webster, I love coming back and showing people I did that when I was in high school. I love for kids to have pride in their work and see things that are still lasting around town. That, to me, is everything. The gallery brings together artists and community members. You have multiple different audiences. How do you achieve reaching all of them and bringing them in? Is it just through classes? No, we've, uh, we try to vary who we partner with. Like we've partnered with the Meriden Chamber to do events. We've partnered with the South Meriden Lions Club and we did a thing called the charity event where we would, we would ask artists to take a table, chair, lamp and paint it, mosaic it, do something with that. And then there would be a wine tasting upstairs and the charity event downstairs where you could purchase a piece of artwork from artists. Every time somebody does something like that for us, we put it on Pinterest and we say, you know, made by such and such and such a year. So you can go back and look to see what you made and when you made it. Other groups we've partnered with, um, ADK, a teaching sorority, uh, like the Little Free Libraries, we've done some work. Um, the, my Mosaic team just recently did six indigenous animals down at Red Bridge. And it's their mosaic onto the wall, so when you take a walk down a linear trail, you can see that. It's in Girls Club, Girl Scouts, some church groups. Uh, people call me up to say, you know, what, what can we do with kids? Well, you know, what do you have for a project? And Usually I can think of something to keep kids busy. How is all this funded? We always apply for a community development block grant. Um, I just recently got a state of Connecticut arts grant and that I'm working with Washington Middle School uh, to do a project. Each student is making a nine by nine heart that they will get to keep, will frame. And then the big project is a three foot by five foot and it's going to say hope and mirror. So when you walk down the halls of Washington Middle School, you are reflected in hope, sort of like Michael Jackson's Man in the Mirror kind of thing. You make the change. Those are two recent grants that we just received. Most of the grants we get are not for operational expenses. They are more for new lighting or new windows and things like that. We rely on donations a lot. Are a lot of the materials donated? I get some materials from St kind of Stella Pelagano over in Southington, and she always gives me a decent price on you know stained glass and things like that. Um, I, I have friends who you know have wood, it's plywood at their house, and they'll cut it up and give it to me to use for background. So um, I have a, a core group of people that are very helpful and donate things. You've mentioned several of the projects that are ongoing right now. Are there any projects that you haven't spoken about that you're planning for the future? Uh, my mosaic team is still in uh, making mosaics. Like I said, we finished a couple uh, historical Meriden ones. We're hoping to get some pictures of them, send them out to businesses that might want them in their office or their, well, hopefully not their home. I'd like to have them on public display. Um, but in addition to that, my mosaic team is making some individual uh, like a, a rese that's like three by three feet or a, a tree or something that they can come in, still be having fun, uh, creating art, and then we could put it up for sale and make some money towards the roof. So you do a lot of celebratory kind of birthday parties and you have paint parties. Could you talk a little bit about that? We'll do anything to get you to come in to have fun. <laughs> art is fun. It's for all levels. You don't have to be an artist. You just have to want to come in. So we will have birthday parties for children. We'll have retirement parties. Uh, we'll do canvas parties. We'll do mandala parties. We'll do anything your heart desires to get you in the building. 
And then, of course, you know, it's a beautiful view. We overlook the new train station and the Meriden Green. So it's a beautiful view of right now. The, uh, the bridge is lit up. It says, Happy Holidays in Green. Aww. It's lovely. We have one of the best views of the park in town. And we have four stories. So we have Pottery Studio in the cellar. Uh, main floor is the store where we have monthly shows. So it might be a theme show. We had the fall show. Uh, we have a textile show, photo show. It changes every month except for... Christmas, where it's strictly Christmas. What the volunteers have done to the gallery is incredible. They transformed it. It's gorgeous. It's beautiful. There's Christmas stuff everywhere. You know, you need to come in and take a look. And there's two, I believe, 223 uh, artisans that display their work there for sale. And it's all very reasonably priced. To go back to what you were saying before, so many artists come together at this place, which is what I believe makes it so special. Your mom has actually been a part of the organization for quite some time. Where does she stand with the organization right now, and where has she been with it? My mom is one of the few life members. Mom, I'm sorry, I know you just turned 93. She's been a member for a long, long time. She's seen artists come and go. She's seen artists pass away. She's seen their work on the wall still. And she's still active. Until COVID, she was still doing uh, the portrait uh, classes upstairs. To have someone that dedicated, and we, like I said, we have 24 other, or maybe 23 other life members, that's a, that's a long time to give to an organization. But when it's your your, your livelihood and your, your pleasure in life, then yes, you want to stay with it, pursue it, and keep it going. And what has this organization done for you personally? Wow. Uh, for me personally, it's given me a chance to get kids and organizations to come down, make beautiful art, and have it hanging around town permanently. That gives me pleasure. That's I, a... I, I love, like I said, the Meriden Wall and the stuff at the square and the back of the building and uh, the stairs we just painted. So, yeah, I'm, I'm leaving my mark on this town. Yeah, and, and that must be such a, a great impact on these children. I know for me, finding art was just wonderful, so I can imagine bringing kids that might not traditionally get into interested in art would be very rewarding for you. I taught middle school, Lincoln Middle School, eighth grade boys. As you know, they're a little antsy, but give boys tools, goggles, and cutters, <laughs> and things to keep them busy, and they create all sorts of wonderful things, and that's how it all started because of antsy eighth grade boys and then I you know I, I started with tile and eventually worked into glass and I've been doing it for I don't know how many years a lot of years now. This organization how has it impacted these children that help out with these community involved projects? Sense of pride. Yeah. You come back and you see something that you made on the wall and it's woo -woo! <laughs> it's still there and I did a good job. Did you always have an interest in mosaics or was it really those middle schoolers that got you interested in them and then hooked? I think it was them. I, I tell the, the kids, if you're going to be on my team, you have to want to make it the best you can do because you don't want to come back in 10 years and say, oh, I shouldn't have done that. I should have done it a different way. You know, give it your all. Give it 100%. Thank you, Christine, for giving it your all and being on this episode of Making It Artisan Stories. If you'd like to check out more of Gallery 53, you can see them on gallery53.org. Thank you for watching another episode. What separates the gallery from other towns is that it's one of a kind. It's one of the only organizations like itself.